If you already have been watching my channel for the past year, you would have known that this past year has been a very, very, very spendy year. Like very, very spendy. So the main reason that I sold a lot of the things that I did this year is really just to recuperate money and just being very brutal with my own collection not holding on uh, to things that i don't absolutely either use all the time or absolutely love the most so yes nothing to be alarmed of this is purely a video that you guys requested and i'm doing for the sake of you know for your curiosity i guess i have my list right here there's quite a bit to go through but i'll try to group certain things together because it's a lot of them just make sense that they no longer belong in my collection before we get started i have to talk about the jewelry that i'm wearing and they are so so beautiful so this portion of the video is sponsored by italo italo jewelry they come in these beautiful beautiful boxes so right here i have another piece that i'm not wearing because this little bracelet which is super cute all these pieces are sterling silver and gold plated or rhodium plated in the case of these really pretty earrings this little bracelet i'm not wearing at the moment it is yellow gold plated with crystals throughout it's a little um tennis bracelet it's so dainty and beautiful except that it's just too big i can put it on even without opening the clasp so it just goes to show how big it is therefore this piece even though the size does not fit me it is still a really really dainty and beautiful piece i will likely gift this to someone else but i will say it's so cute and very well made as usual italo's jewelry are just stunning beautiful craftsmanship so i have these earrings don't they remind you of the chanel camellias they are just stunning the stones on them are just so pretty and shiny these are so comfortable these earrings are so stunning they look like high jewelry and then on my neck They've also gifted me this piece, which I also chose, and this piece is so stunning. It's sort of like a, uh, it's sort of like a tennis style necklace. It actually drops all the way here, but I like to pull it up a little bit just because the small part of my uh, neck is right here, the hollow part. So I like to pull it up a little bit in a beautiful gift box with all the documentations, polishing cloth for your silver, 60 day return policy, one year warranty, and then you have all the certifications. I will link all the pieces that I have featured. I will also link my coupon code that you can use at checkout. I don't always do vlog sales, by the way. I used to only really post them either on a local facebook group page or um on my instagram page because i do get asked a lot where i sell, sell my items and because i do have this public platform i do uh, make use of it sometimes i do mention it just in case any of you guys are interested of course there's never any pressure to buy anything from me otherwise if you don't have a lot of experience selling anything and uh, it really is a lot of hard work and a lot of stress related to stress to selling. So uh, I would still recommend that you go through consignment, but of course you have to pay a consignment fee for that. Uh, but yeah, I do get asked that a lot. Okay, so let's just go through the list. Why sell Uptown Pouch? It was an item that I bought and never used actually. Um, part of the reason I think is because of the pandemic. I sort of bought it during a time when I could not really go out so uh, it kind of applies to a lot of these things but especially for the YSL Uptown pouch it was one of those items that is such a great buy such a good price point and so beautiful so well made but I never had a use for it and therefore when it came time to calling my collection that was just an easy decision to let go of the only YSL item that I had Fendi items I did have a few left in my collection and I decided that I'm gonna really streamline my collection I mean I am after all the biggest fan of Chanel so uh, the bulk of my collection consists of Chanel so the decision to let go of all my Fendi Valentino uh, YSL items was just kind of makes sense so i sold my bucket bag i sold my defender cover for the peekaboo and i think the previous year i already sold 
my can I bag. Again, nothing wrong with those items, of course, and the bucket bag went to the beautiful Amelia here on YouTube. Fendi has such beautiful items and their things are so whimsical, at least the stuff that I had was so whimsical and colorful and you know, if, if I had all the money in the world, I would keep everything. But I guess at the end of the day, I decided that, you know, Fendi was sort of like a phase where I just dipped my toes in, tried it out, loved it, served its purpose at the time. And when it came time to this year where I decided on the next biggest goal, uh, I decided that it was time to call it. It was as simple as that. Same with the Fendi strap, which I actually sold on eBay. Valentino, I had two bags from Valentino. Spike bag in the navy color. That's such a gorgeous bag. And then I also had the rock stud crossbody bag. The studs on those bags are just phenomenal. They really add to the bag, especially the lambskin bag with the studs on them. It really prevents from the lambskin itself getting wear and tear and I really really appreciated that. That bag is such a stunner especially held as a clutch and it had a beautiful snake chain as well. But then again I had so many mini bags that um, when it came to culling, when it came to curating, I just decided okay Valentinos have to go as well. So. Um, same with the crossbody little bag. It was sort of like a, the smallest bag that I had at the time. It's not really a nano bag because it still fit a phone. That bag actually fits a ton. It almost fits as much as my mini square. But given the choice, and I'm asking very honestly, right? Between the Valentino Rockstead crossbody and a Chanel mini square, which one would you sell if you had to let something go? Hence the Valentino. I had still one more Gucci belt left. It was a private sale actually just on Facebook to someone local here. I also let go of my LV belt. Um, that one I let go from the vlog sale. And then um, with Dior, I only let go of one item at the time, but I am letting go of more items, which is on my Instagram page. I am letting go of the tribal earrings, especially with Dior costume jewelry. They just don't suit me. The post that they use is slightly a thicker gauge. Thick posts, I just don't like it. I think the tapered ones from Chanel are slightly better still because at least they're still part of the post that is a bit thinner, but with the Dior posts, they are uniformly, um, uniform thickness and they are a thicker gauge. Therefore, for me, they just really don't work. I can still wear them, of course, but I would only wear them for a couple hours, so they really don't serve me very well. I had three Balmain jackets in total, one in black, one in pink, and one in red. They were all the classic, very fitted, double-breasted one so stunning uh, again the pink one i never wore i only wore in videos which is kind of silly i never wore them out the red one i wore it i think twice one time for christmas and i think the other time was for some sort of holiday as well maybe new year's chinese new year because it's the color red it's just one of those things where you own multiples of them because you liked the original so much that it really doesn't serve much of a purpose because you only will still gravitate towards one more. Uh, I was still selling the black one and I'm still thinking of letting go of the black one just because I have a bit of a love and hate relationship with that jacket. And I think a lot of people do. The love is that they are so streamlined. I mean, the tailoring is just extraordinary. The fact that it can make your body look like hourglass, even though you don't really have an hourglass body, is just so stunning. For me, the hate part is that due to my uh, shoulder uh, injury, it's not really an injury, it's, it's just, you know, my joint issues. It's hard for me to get in that jacket just because with such a tailored fit and Balmain is known for its very, very tight fit. Um, it's just a little hard for me, therefore even the black one, even though I favor the black one, I still don't wear it a ton. I am trying to get more ready to wear next year, especially because I would love that elusive classic Chanel jacket. Um, at least the one that I have in mind, like I really want, want something so, so classic looking with the buttons and the pockets and stuff, but you know, a Chanel price range, which is 
probably more than a classic flat for a jacket it is kind of scary so I might still have to let go of more things to make room for something that is so extraordinary but so crazy out, out of my price range. Another piece of ready to wear that I didn't let go is the oversized Balenciaga pullover. The, it was navy and red fonts and it's really really cute if you love very oversized clothes and if you love very very casual clothes which I do dress very casually occasionally, but I do think that maybe that one is slightly too casual for my style. I still think that I am a bit more polished sometimes, and if I do go very casual, I usually want to be unrecognizable, and therefore I don't want to be in a Balenciaga sweater. And so I did end up selling that one too. For me, Louis Vuitton serves a purpose of errands um, to me i love the canvas when it comes to durability so i love having one workhorse never full and so everything else i sort of don't care as much about anymore because if i'm not gonna wear a never full like if i'm not casual enough to wear a never full and if I'm not dressy enough to wear Chanel or Hermes, I would just not wear a bag because I also nowadays can go with just a micro bag uh, very, very easily. So a lot of the LV items that I had uh, from my um, collecting over the years no longer really serve me as well. And of course the pandemic has a lot to do with that, but I just decided that I am mainly going to concentrate on the main things that I do associate more with aesthetically, if that makes sense. So I did end up letting go of the Spring Street handbag, the multi pochette, I let go of that uh, earlier on. Petit Sac Plat also recently sold on my most recent vlog sale. I'm still trying to let go of one more bag, which is my Neverfull. Now I do have two Neverfulls. <laughs> I am keeping the older Neverfull, which I have used way more, the one with the monogram and Vachetta. But the one that is so new and personalized, so it has the dark leather trim, uh, red lining, and the personalized stickers from the My World Tour line that I chose. That one I am selling because I figured... I have two of those bags which I don't even rotate enough. If someone likes the design that I put on the bag, then I'd rather that that bag serve that person. In the accessories front, I am also pretty much letting go of most of my LV accessories, if not all of them, I think. Most of my LV items I have owned a longer time since I started my luxury journey more from buying LV. Uh, we're not counting the coach and contemporary brands. We're really talking strictly the higher end brands. So the LV items, I sort of had them longer, especially the shawl was also one of my earlier items. So this is just me sort of, I guess, moving on. Now that I'm in my 40s, I um, decided that, you know, it's okay to let it go. Sometimes it's just about letting go too, you know? All that's left are some of the Chanel items that I let go. And I think those were really the shocker for a lot of you guys. I think a lot of you know me as a Chanel lover, of course. And maybe it shocks you to see me let go of Chanel items. But even with Chanel items, they can still be um, redundant or, or not as practical for me once I've owned the item long enough to know. So the cocoa handle I sold uh, because I have three of them. I had three of them. So I sold the black one and I still have two of them left. The two that I'm holding on are the light gray color and the blue, royal blue color with the exotic handle. Those two I'm having a harder time letting go and I do like them a lot. I don't wear my cocoa handles so often which is why most of the time I do my, you know, would repurchase videos type of thing. I don't really include my cocoa handles, not because there's anything wrong with them, but I just don't really use them as much compared to my other bags. So I am still holding on to them because I do love them. Uh, they are the prettiest colors and exotic. You can't get that back with Chanel. So I'm holding on to them, but at the end of the day, an extra black one really doesn't serve me since I already don't use enough of the other ones. Okay, the next Chanel bags that I sold 
are more recent of course i still have two chanel bags that i'm selling and it's on my instagram page i think the jumbo i've spoken about it a lot of times the single flop jumbo flop um it was sort of a bag that i bought very early on during my chanel journey um, yeah, because I bought that one in 2016, so it was one of my earliest. And I'm so glad that I got a single flap because if I had gotten a double flap, it would totally not serve me at all. At least the single flap was usable. And if you love a good size, oversized looking bag, but you don't want the weight, single flap is the way to go. So when i decided to sell that bag there were so many i mean so many requests and luckily the person that got it she acted really really fast literally within a minute of me posting i think she emailed me and paid me right away it was so insane fast that everyone else that came after her they um couldn't buy it so so glad for her and it's meant to be for her of course for me when it comes to using a bag if i put the same amount of things which i would in that same in that larger size bag it would just be flowing inside and it just feels so weird to be carrying a bag like that and so that's sort of how it worked out with the jumbo for me because it's still a much larger size classic flap even though it's not that big it really is not that big of a bag but it's so much bigger than my mini size bags that I'm used to that it just didn't make sense. Even if it was one of the hardest decisions to let go of such a classic flap, like the jumbo flap is such a classic, oh, such a good look flap. Um, and the 90s era is coming back, the 90s fashion is coming back, so it's a matter of time where everyone's going to be rocking their jumbos. I was happy with that decision, so yeah. I mean, I could have let it go maybe later and get even more money, but it's just one of those things where it's never going to be a good timing. The next thing that sold was the small vanity with a little top handle. And maybe you guys wouldn't even know because that sold right after a private member's live. Uh, so yeah, during that live stream, we uh, were just chatting. We were just showing and talking about things that we're selling that we're thinking of selling and uh someone was interested in that little vanity and that bag was history in my collection the bag is so stunning and as a very novelty and almost vintage looking piece it's such a collector's piece it's such a good piece for the price point honestly even if you were to just buy one right now from the retail space it's still such a great piece to buy for the price point now just because the price point is great all these micro size bags that i bought including the vanity pretty much added up to a lot of money so because it was zipper and i'm not the biggest fans of zipper I decided that the, the vanity had to go. So let's talk about the other micro bags. So the vanity can still fit a phone, uh, but it is kind of a st stretch, of course. If you have a big case, it wouldn't fit. Uh, but I would still count that as a mini, uh, sorry, as a micro bag. So having six of them, really, like, really, Amy, really? <laughs> Which is why I ended up uh, wanting to let go of some. This one, I, I pretty much want it first. Uh, originally so that one is staying for sure and then so the pink version of that is staying as well now the round clutch i had it for a while i got it in hawaii that was was more that one's sort of a had a special meaning too so I'm not letting that one go therefore the other three has to go so it sort of was by process of elimination and last but not least um this one is a bit of a shocker to some of you as well is my reissue in the 19a metier da collection so the one from the new york egyptian collection with the graffiti the gold graffiti i do ultimately favor the classic turn lock more so that's why i also still prefer even the coco handle because it still has that classic turn lock i just love that feeling of turning that turn lock versus the reissue turn lock there are many 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 people still after that that design of bag that you can no longer get 
so might as well go to someone else and i also benefit from recuperating the money so that bag i still have right now it's still sitting right there because um the subby did agree to buy it but she is uh, still working out the funds but it's essentially sold as well my collection did change quite a bit this year but i think it's in the right direction for me because yeah 40 40 is a big year right and also I was so ready. I was really mentally getting myself ready for it, uh, for the whole Hermes journey, which is so difficult. Oh my gosh, don't start if you're not ready. I speak from experience. If you don't have the patience of waiting, and also if you're not ready for the extravagant pre-spending, um, honestly, just wait till you're ready because it's very, very stressful. Um, but I was ready and I was um, preparing myself, planning for it. And this whole part of the vlog sale is part of the planning. But yeah, please take this as sort of more of a, you know, just as a out of curiosity, just knowing why, because it honestly does not mean anything else. It honestly does not imply that the item that I sold is no longer a good item and therefore you should be selling it too. No, 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 nothing like that. I still love a lot of the things that other people would also would have gotten rid of a long time ago. There is a, a scale, right? From one to 10, there is a scale of where things can fall and you can still keep things that fall in the middle or slightly on the left or right, but you know, it's up to you to decide, right? So yeah, so that's my journey and items that I have sold. Um, do I miss them? A little bit, but I also know that it's a necessary step to move forward. So I will do a follow-up to this where I share my best purchases of this year, this past year. Um, so this is more of a items I sold and why, and next I will be sharing the best uh, items that I've really been enjoying that I've added in my collection this past year. So look forward to that. I hope that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you back and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!